All living former Prime Ministers, with the exception of Paul Keating, have signed a statement condemning Hamas. They are criticising the October 7 attack on Israel and calling for the unconditional release of hostages. Scott Morrison, Malcolm Turnbull, Tony Abbott, Julia Gillard, Kevin Rudd and John Howard have all signed the statement. The group is also endorsing a two-state solution and for sustained humanitarian aid into Gaza, saying, at this time, more than ever, we must, in the words of the 34th Psalm, seek peace and pursue it. And here at home, that is done by defending our Australian values, condemning hate speech and intolerance, and respecting the people of Australia in all our diversity. Let's bring in the Executive Director at the Australia-Israel Jewish Affairs Council, Colin Rubenstein. You'd welcome that statement from the former Prime Minister's Colin? Absolutely. Uh, it's a fine example of former Prime Ministers understanding the reality of this situation. This is a contest between civilizational values on the one hand and barbarism on the other, but we're committed to saving human lives. Uh, they've unequivocally condemned uh, Hamas's uh, barbaric um, uh, attack and massacre against innocent Israelis on October 7. And, and they're calling for tolerance and mutual respect uh, at home. Uh, they're calling for Australians to respect each other, not only to not incite racial violence, but, but don't go out of their way to incite uh, uh, racial hatred, but not to incite violence as well. So certainly, of course, I welcome that statement. You were critical of Tony Burke's intervention in the debate late last week. Can I ask you, though, as, uh, as someone who represents the Australia, Australian Jewish community and has done for a long time, uh, Mr Burke as a representative of the seat of Watson, a big proportion of Muslim Australians in that seat, shouldn't he too be representing their concerns? Uh, look, uh, we all share compassion for innocent civilians caught up uh, in this terrible uh, war. And uh, that obviously includes Palestinians, clearly uh, the Israelis who were murdered, 1,800 of them, the hostages that are being held. Of course, we share in the compassion. Uh, but Mr Burke really crossed the line in not firmly repudiating suggestions that Israel is not only an apartheid society, but somehow he, wouldn't add, he didn't repudiate the question about whether they were committing genocide. He should have said the genocidal movement in this situation, of course, is Hamas. And uh, he did distinguish between Hamas uh, and Palestinians, but what he should have been calling on is for Hamas to desist, to stop holding innocent Palestinians as hostages to their extreme agenda, which is not only to kill Jews, but to wipe out Israel, as anyone who follows this understands. So that's the problem with what Mr Burke was, uh, was doing. And, of course, the flag is another matter, flying a flag on a town hall. Uh, in this situation, that flag in recent times has been associating not only with people celebrating uh, the massacre, uh, but we've seen terrible anti-Semitism even in Australia on the steps uh, of the Opera House. And uh, are, are people calling for liberating Palestine from the river to the sea under that flag, which means mm. the elimination of Israel. If we're talking about an outcome which a former Prime Minister support and we support, a two-state outcome with both sides living in peace, with the Palestinians accepting and respecting a Jewish state, Israel, alongside their own state, that's a different proposition. But regrettably, we're not in that state, and nothing Mr Burke has indicated or was said in that interview suggested that he understood those limitations of what he was arguing for. The, the Foreign Minister Penny Wong has said today um, that when Israel's friends urge Israel to protect civilian life, as we have, it is critical that Israel listens. We are seeing continuing civilian deaths, which is, I think, we saw in the United Nations vote, that the international community will not accept continuing civilian deaths. Do you accept the point made by the Foreign Minister? Well, look, we don't want civilian deaths whatsoever, but uh, the, UN, the problem with the UN resolution was calling for a truce and ceasefire gives a free pass for the appalling atrocities committed by Hamas and what it represents. It means time out for Hamas to regroup and continue with its barbaric program. So, no, that UN resolution at its heart was totally unacceptable. On the other hand, yes, Israel has accepted the need for basic supplies to get through to innocent, suffering people. 
I mean, admittedly, more could be going through, but one has to point the finger at other actors here, not just Israel. Egypt and the Rafah crossing, why aren't they letting out Palestinians? And also, they're involved in the amount of supplies that actually go in. And when it comes to water, uh, pipelines have been restored. In fact, Israel was only ever responsible for only up to 10 percent of water supplies. The hospitals have solar energy. Uh, there's half a million diesel uh, 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 litres of, uh, uh, of diesel that is under the control of Hamas in Gaza. Hamas has ample supplies of food and other supplies yeah. in all of its command and control centres in those 500 kilometres of tunnels that they've built. Uh, uh, the metro th that they've turned Gaza into, a militarised camp. Why aren't people pointing the finger at Hamas much more than they're doing? They're, yeah. after all, ultimately responsible for the, for the damages and for the losses and the casualties that regrettably have been experienced by innocent Palestinians. And Israel is doing its very best, as it always has, to abide by the rules of law, more than any other country, according to independent experts. So uh, Hamas yeah. also has the wherewithal to keep flying rockets into Israel. Why isn't there pressure on them to release the hostages? Uh, and then uh, that would be a long step along the way to alleviating the suffering uh, of uh, the uh, civilians in Gaza. So uh, let's, Colin Rubenstein. A, let's get a little bit fair yeah. dinkum um, about all of this and where the true responsibility lies in the horrors that are unfolding. We appreciate your time as always, Colin. Thanks so much. We'll stay in touch.